The Sims ends with an alien invasion. Have you ever noticed the wild differences in each console version of The Sims 2? On the Nintendo DS, you're a hotshot hotel tycoon dealing with bookings, room service, and angry guests. On PlayStation 2, life is a never-ending quest for social ascension and a penthouse view, while the PSP version focuses on narrative-driven minigames. But the real intrigue lies on the Game Boy Advance where a surreal TV show version of Strangetown takes place. Here, Tank Grunt, a burly teddy bear of a man, is seen in various episodes combating the threat of an alien invasion. Tank and friends work together to stop the aliens from taking over. This might seem like a quirky easter egg until you play the other versions. On the PSP, you'll spot Tank Grunt at the heart of an alien research base, and the Nintendo DS version depicts the same alien invasion as the GBA version, making it undeniably canon. This explains why The Sims 4 is on an alternate timeline. Since the console versions occur after The Sims 2 and The Sims 3 is a prequel, the original Sims saga ends in the cataclysmic downfall of humanity. If you thought you knew Angus Crumplebottom, brace yourself for a deep dive into her tragic life. We first meet Agnes in The Sims' hot date. She was as prudish as they came and couldn't stand the sight of lovebirds cooing in her vicinity. Her mere presence was enough to ice over a romantic dinner or smother a passionate kiss. Alas, by Sims 2, dear old Agnes had shuffled off her mortal coil. It's in The Sims 3, however, that the curtain is finally pushed back. Far from the sour spinster we had known, we discover that Agnes was once a young woman in love. Her beloved husband Eric tragically died during their honeymoon, leaving poor Agnes a young widow. As if that wasn't enough, her backstory suggests she suffered the loss of a child or yearned desperately for one. Could this be the origin of her disdain for public affection? A bitter reminder of her lost love and unfulfilled motherhood? Yes, Sims fans, we've often rolled our eyes at Agnes and her kin, dismissing them as mere annoyances. But perhaps, just perhaps, we should pause and see her not as the perpetual party pooper, but as a broken and suffering individual. Seriously, what's going on with the Mango family? In The Sims 3, we meet Maru, Magnus, and Matthew Mango. Each live in separate worlds, and while their relationship is not explicitly known, it's presumed they're cousins. Maru lives in Sunlit Tides. He's in the military, and a rather high-ranking member at that, as both the base and the street he lives on is named after his family. Magnus lives in Aurora Skies. He's also in the military, leading the local unit. Matthew lives on Isla Paradiso. He lives unemployed and alone in a small seaside shack. He doesn't possess the military aspiration of his cousins, instead choosing to live a relaxing and carefree life. So why am I choosing to talk about this ordinary military family? Because they're insane. Maru shocked everyone when he went into the military. He's said to hear voices and even has an imaginary friend named Mitch. Matthew collects driftwood, has no memory of his family, and aspires to be a world-renowned chef. Magnus, however, seems to have been spared the insanity. Or was he? Magnus couldn't have been happier to learn his insane cousin was now leading an army. Also, they each lead an army of one as there are no other military members to be found! Why is everyone on these worlds so okay with this? Who killed Bonehilda? Bonehilda is a skeletal maid present in Making Magic, Sims 3, and Sims 4. We know very little about her backstory, but I propose that Bonehilda is Kaylin Langrak. Kaylin is a maid from Pleasant View in The Sims 2. She's most known for her affair with Don Lothario and the married Daniel Pleasant. The romantic entanglements of Don Lothario is a topic for another video, but suffice to say there are a lot of ladies in Pleasant View that want Caitlyn out of the picture. If you look at Caitlyn's traits, you'll notice that she's neat, a perfectionist, likes kids, and aspires to have a family. And wouldn't you know it, Bonehilda shares these exact traits across Sims 3 and 4. The biggest wrench in my theory, of course, is the timeline. As I've mentioned before, The Sims 3 takes place before The Sims 1 and 2. If Bonehilda was introduced in The Sims 1 and Caitlyn in The Sims 2, it presents some problems, right? I think not. Remember, Bonehilda was introduced in Making Magic. Her appearance in the story defies logic as magic does. This also explains how Bonehilda is present in The Sims 4, which is accepted to be in an alternate dimension. I propose she was killed by a scorned lover after The Sims 2, and then ripped through The Simverse by magic into The Sims 1. Is there inbreeding occurring in The Sims 3? In The Sims 3, there's a French-style town called Twinbook that is situated in a bayou not unlike Louisiana. In the outskirts of town, we find the Marsh Mansion where the Bayless family reside. Mansion is a misnomer, however, as the size of the home and the amenities imply poverty. Skeet and Gwen Bayless and their children Chase and Tay live a modest and unassuming life as stereotypical representations of rural southerners. They wear camo, love to hunt and fish, and mostly keep to themselves. According to the family bio, however, both the name Bayless and their family tree are difficult to trace. Gwen's bio specifically states that anyone who tries to track the family line is only led in circles. Is this simply a clever joke about how convoluted their family history is, or rather a clue that their family tree may literally be intertwined with a few kissing cousins. To add to the suspicion, each of the Bayless family members has the family-oriented trait. Normally, this would just mean that the Sim enjoys spending time with their family, but in the context of the Bayless, it just seems a little creepy. Regardless, inbreeding is technically impossible in The Sims, and I'm not one to stereotype, but it really makes you wonder. Did you know there's a secret society in The Sims 4? 
The Discover University Expansion Pack gave players the ability to join universities and college organizations such as the Art Society, the Debate Guild, and the Spirit Squad. Hidden from most players, however, is that there is a secret society that you can join called the Order of Enchantment. Joining the Order is no small feat and requires multiple steps to accomplish. Any attempt to learn more about this society in-game leads you to various roadblocks or missing information. Once you do figure out the secret, you're visited by an existing member and given the opportunity to receive the secret society's robe and mask and join their Order. The Order protects and worships sprites, magical fairy-like creatures that were thought to be nothing more than a fairy tale. The Order's founder, Esther Mudgett, was said to have stumbled onto them when doing research near Gibbs Hill. Unfortunately, her fate is unknown as it said she took advantage of the sprite's magic and was cursed to wander the woods forever. There are various perks as you rank up in the order, even gaining the ability to summon sprites to bring some extra joy to your friends. Be careful though, as the sprites require a lot of attention and you may find yourself overwhelmed by your new companions. Today, we're going to begin to unravel the scandalous life of Domothario. We first meet Don in The Sims 2. He's engaged to Cassandra Goth, but is also romantically entangled with Nina and Dina Caliente and Kaylin Langerak. The central plotline of The Sims 2, of course, is the disappearance of Bella Goth. Don's memories reveal that he attempted to make out with his fiancée's mother shortly before her disappearance. Whether Don was an innocent bystander or a conniving conspirator in Bella's disappearance has never been fully proven. What we do know for sure is that his relationship with Cassandra is on thin ice. If you try to get Don to marry Cassandra early in the game, there's a great chance he'll leave her at the altar. Is it because he's non-committal? Or is it possible that his engagement to Cassandra is part of a grander, darker plot? In order for us to fully understand Don Lothario and who he truly is, we must understand the machinations of his longest running lovers. I believe Don Lothario worked alongside two of the most cunning, devious, and murderous sims ever to steal the Goth's fortune, a decision that would ultimately spell his own doom. The Caliente sisters are serial killers, and I can prove it. In part one of our series, I concluded that Don Lothario was likely working alongside Nina and Dina to steal the Goth's fortune. But who exactly are the Caliente sisters? Nina and Dina Caliente were first introduced as Don's neighbors in The Sims 2. At the start of the game, both Nina and Dina are romantically involved with Don Lothario, with the former having been dating since they were teens. They're respectably well off despite neither having a job, as Dina is a widow to the wealthy and much older Michael Bachelor. Longtime fans of The Sims will recall Michael is Bella Goth's older brother. After Bella's disappearance, Dina immediately set her sights on Bella's husband and Michael's brother-in-law, Mortimer Goth. Timeline issues aside, in The Sims 3, we learn that younger Dina actually has commitment issues and is a bit of a hothead. Knowing this, I believe Dina married Michael for his money, but when Mortimer achieved great wealth shortly before The Sims 2, Dina murdered Michael to get him out of the picture and began to construct a plot to marry Mortimer. A plot that would ultimately ruin the lives of the entire Goth family and Don Lothario himself. Tom Lothario was framed for the disappearance of Bella Goth. In our last episode, I accused Dina of offing her husband after Mortimer Goth's rise to prominence. To get to Mortimer, however, she would first have to get rid of Bella. The Caliente sisters have long been painted as the puppet masters behind Bella's disappearance, but Don Lothario was nothing more than a pawn in their plans. Where's the solid proof that Don had a sinister agenda against the Goths? The so-called flirting incident? Let's face it, Don was just being a typical Lothario. It sets him up as the perfect scapegoat, wouldn't you agree? And that's precisely what the crafty Caliente sisters needed. With Bella MIA, they unleashed their dastardly plot. Distract Cassandra Goth with Don's charm while Dina worked her magic on the morning Mortimer. Don's heart was never in it with Cassandra. He was merely a puppet in the hands of the Caliente sisters, lured by the bait of a share in the enormous goth fortune. Things might have worked out differently if Don had realized he was just as disposable to the sisters as everyone else. And sure enough, when he outlived his use, the Caliente sisters disposed of him too. Is there a chupacabra in The Sims 4? For those who don't know, a chupacabra is a legendary creature mentioned in folklore in Puerto Rico, Mexico, and some parts of the United States. The name literally means goat sucker in Spanish, and in fact, that's what it's most known for. It was supposedly spotted by farmers whose animals were found bled out and dead. In The Sims 4, there's a Day of the Dead challenge that requires you to befriend various NPCs to claim sugar skulls. Collecting all nine unique sugar skulls and placing them in their display reveals a tenth skull and a dark story. Residents of Oasis Spring had begun to spot a mysterious creature the size of a hog with the skin of a rat and spines along its back. Ten adventurers set out to capture the creature. One by one, each adventurer was either taken by the creature or lost to the elements. A lone survivor, however, stumbled back into town. She was the first member of the team that had been taken by the creature. Desert Madness had overtaken her and she could only repeatedly mutter one name, El Chupacabra. The Sims series has many occult creatures across its game, but a murderous creature like the Chupacabra is something else entirely. Are the residents of Oasis Spring in danger? Or is this just folklore? 